Let's talk about the Donegal Lass, a great jig written by Brian Finnegan from the brilliant Irish band Fluke. First off, let's chat briefly about picking patterns for a jig. Largely there are two options where you do down, up, down, down, up, down. Or you can do down, up, down, up, down, up. And really, once you stick to the rule that the first note of the bar is on a down stroke, and uh, triplets and trebles start on a down, up, down, start on a down stroke, you won't go too far wrong. But if you really want to punch out the rhythm of a jig, it's a good idea to start each uh, set of three notes in the 6-8, uh, down, up, down, down, up, down. And I'll, I'll show you what that sounds like. By playing the first of each set of three notes on that down, up, down, down, up, down, you can really punch out that jig rhythm because you just have more strength, essentially, on the down stroke. You can play it and achieve a more lyrical sound by doing down, up, down, up, down, up. It'll depend on where the tune is going in relation to the strings and how you're crossing strings and so on and so forth. And there are jigs that certainly lend themselves better to a more lyrical approach. This jig, just by its nature, is very, very rhythmical. And it's worth, I think, doing the down, up, down, down, up, down picking pattern on this one. There is a repeated motif. It happens in the first part and the second part. And there's a little bit of fingering work required in this one just to jump around the strings. And it's this section. The second one is fine, F-sharp, A, D. But that first one, which goes from the G to the B to the high D, that's the most natural or normal way to do it, perhaps, is to lift the fourth finger and come across both strings. So at speed, there's a little bit of work in that. Very important that you leave your index finger on as a support when you are jumping back and over. It is possible, of course, to play that high D with your little finger, and that is, is absolutely an option. Doing it that way, of course, allows you to keep the G note and the B note on all the time, and so that does create that nice resonance. You're getting it on that F. My pinky is not as strong as I wish it was. Maybe this is the way to build it up. When I play this tune, I, I, break, I jump from the G to the B with my fourth finger, or my ring finger. Because that motif is repeated a number of times during the tune, we, we do want to vary it. And one of the easy ways to do that is to do a run of triplets on that G, uh, running up to the high D. You can triplet the F uh, A D section as well. It's not as uh, straightforward as running from a B to a D, obviously. So I would do something like A C sharp D. Or if you wanted to keep the sort of melodic uh, sound the same, you could do the same B C D. 
from the G as from the F. You're kind of just really touching those strings, so they're like that stuttered or kind of dampened triplet sound. There's also the option to vary the actual notes without putting in ornamentation. And one way to do it is to kind of go up the arpeggio and double back down. It works very nicely on the G, I find, that G arpeggio. Uh, not so much on the on the uh, the F A D one, just because of where the tune is going afterwards. It's going up to the open E string, and if you bring that arpeggio back down the way, you're kind of getting caught in a bit of a cul-de-sac. So, repeat the uh, arpeggio up and down on the G, and then the other one just bring it up the ways afterwards. And so that's just varying the tune ever so slightly, so that you're you're just creating a little bit of difference from that motif. So that it doesn't happen every time. Uh, another way to do it is to put uh, single note trebles on the bottom note of the arpeggio. Let's go through the tune once slowly, just so that you can hear where the tune is going. It's pretty straightforward, it's, it's quite repetitive, but I think is, that is probably part of the beauty of the tune itself. Because of the closed fingered nature of the tune, there aren't really that many options for chording it. Uh, there's the obvious things at the end of parts where you have uh, octave notes and uh, things like that. Something that pops into my mind as I'm playing that is that in order to bring some variety and variation to the tune, it's a very simple tune and it's a very repetitive tune. There's not a huge amount of scope for chords and so you can't really create that uh, harmonic dynamic within the tune as easily as you can in some other tunes. What you can do is you can create some darkness and light, so create some essentially some dynamics through volume. And that just basically means playing some passages a little quieter and then really going for the, the, the heavy down rhythm on some of the other sections. And so you're going to create that dynamic change and communicate the story of the tune essentially through volume, for want of a better word. Particularly in that second half, 
you can see how it's almost like a question and answer scenario. You have that low repeated section, followed by that very bright and open A section. B. And so you can really lean into the dynamics in that by really quietening the, the first section. it opens with that kind of glorious A sound and then you can drop it down for the little quieter section Here's one version of the tune. We're just going to throw in a whole load of ornamentation, uh, little half notes, um, and just double down really on the rhythm of the tune and trying to stamp out that rhythm as much as possible through the use of ornamentation and all of those down strokes that we talked about through the down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, which this tune really lends itself to a very, very strong rhythm. <laughs> 